For the Michigan Wolverines, it is on to Ohio State. Found a way to get a win yesterday over Illinois in the closing seconds. 19-17 to was the final score. I'll start here. A little bit of room for improvement for Michigan. You know it. I know it. Everybody in that locker room knows it. There's room for improvement, but you never get upset by winning a football game. Like, that's not something you're going to do is say, oh, man, I, I wish we had, you know, done something different. Yeah, of course, there's things to clean up, but you won the football game against a really physical team that you knew would be a good test for you. All right? There's probably going to be a time in the, in the game against Ohio State where you need the pass game to show up in a big way. All right? We're going to start there. There, there is... Some things still left to be desired. There were two throws at the end of the game. If you're J.J. McCarthy, you're capable of making. That's the great news. The guy's got so much talent, so much ability. He can make those throws in his sleep. They will need him to make those next week. All right, so I want to see that improved. 18 for 34. That's all right. We're going to get better for J.J. McCarthy. But you need him at his best in the biggest game of your season. The trenches was really interesting yesterday for Michigan because for the first time, you played a team that gave you some, I don't want to say trouble, but they pushed back. Like that was a team yesterday in Illinois that has a really great running back in Chase Brown. He doesn't get enough national attention. And that was their calling card as well. They said, hey, we also are a blue collar operation. We also play in the trenches. And they pushed Michigan. But guess what? Michigan pushed back. And that's the mark of great teams, having grit, having the ability to take a punch, take it on the chin, and keep throwing haymakers. That's exactly what Michigan did, finding a way to get a win. Really quickly, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, we would love to have you at the party. Michigan fans, all of you that have joined us in the last two weeks, I think it's upwards of a 1,000 of you. Thank you so much. If you haven't yet, come join us. We have a good time. Also, follow me on the social channels at JD Paquel on Twitter and on Instagram. A lot of interaction there. Stay tuned to the end of this video because we have an announcement for you Michigan fans that I think you will want to hear. Roll party, roll. The biggest takeaway for me yesterday, probably the, the most pleasant thing if you're a Michigan fan, you won your own style of fight yesterday. Like I said, physical, in the trenches, run the ball, game control. You won that style of fight, but guess what? You didn't have your best punch in Blake Corum. You hope and pray he's okay. Jim Harbaugh sounded optimistic about him after the game. Obviously, he came back in the second half for, I believe it was a play or two. Didn't finish the game, but Illinois challenged. Illinois challenged you, and offensively, you didn't have your best day. After Corum went out of the game, you were a little bit more limited offensively. But again, finding a way to win. Now, going forward for Michigan, I think if they can you know, get healthy, that's plan A. But if they can't, there will be more asked of J.J. McCarthy in the run game. Whether it's in the read option, whether it's more quarterback design runs, you have utilized him so well so far this year, but also there has been a lot asked of that running game to where if you wrinkle him in a little more on that read option or, like I said, design runs, that could be something that I, I think could potentially take an Ohio State team by surprise. Now, is that what you want to live off of? No, but I'm just saying, if you don't have your top two backs, you may need to ask more of J.J. McCarthy. I won't say if you don't have your top two backs. Let's just say if they're not at full strength. That would be optimal, and I think that could be something that helps add some resources to the pot in the run game if you're Michigan. You catch my drift. But again, finding a way to win your own style of fight without having your go-to move, that means something. That's the mark of great teams. That's the mark of experienced, mature culture. And I've said it before. This team last year won the Big Ten, went to the college football playoff. Yes, same head coach. Yes, a lot of guys on this roster were on that team. But in terms of new starters, new coordinators, new quarterback, there's a lot of opportunity for this to feel like a big stage and the bright lights. And I didn't see any of that from yet from them yesterday. I saw them just go about their business, be transactional, never any sense of panic. And now they have their biggest game of the season right in front of them with Ohio state. Before we get to that though, we can't do a segment on Michigan's game yesterday without talking about Jake Moody. Jake Moody is a professional kicker playing college right now 
four for four, including the game winner. Where is Michigan without him yesterday? I mean, if he misses one of those, mathematically speaking, they wouldn't have won that game. Jake Moody is an absolute weapon. Deserves all the credit in the world. Deserves all the national accolades in the world that are definitely coming his way yet again. But Jake Moody, don't be surprised if he ends up being a weapon yet again this coming week against Ohio State. That'll be, I think, a phenomenal game and a phenomenal grudge match. But Jake Moody, absolute guy. To be able to trot out there in a game like that with your team's playoff hopes on the line. Where it's not a tie game and you, you know, you make it or you miss it. It's okay, we'll play for overtime. No, if you miss that game, you're not making the playoff likely. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. That was Michigan's season. Where it had to at least feel like it when he lined up to take it. Ice in his veins. Can't say enough good things about his effort yesterday. So now you've teed it up for your biggest game of the year. You have earned the right to have all the national attention that's coming your way that you've already had, but on this game against Ohio State, you've earned all the pressure that's coming your way. This will be a playoff game in every sense of the word. I know the winner goes to the Big Ten title. That's great. This is a playoff game. And I am extremely excited to say that the hard count is hitting the road and we will be in Columbus for Michigan, Ohio State. It's a game that I have grown up watching and a rivalry that I've experienced through my television, but to be able to be there in person and see all of you and see the game and just take it all in, I, I, I'm giddy. I'm a kid in a candy store. And so extremely fired up for that to be a reality, extremely fired up to see all of y'all there. Let's party, man. It's going to be a good time. Columbus, the greatest rivalry arguably in sports, we're coming for you. All right? So, I'm J.D. Pacquiao. This has been the Hard Count Nick Break doing the real heavy lifting. Again, this is your show. You drive this whole operation. So we thank you in advance for that. We're going to see y'all in Columbus. We're going to keep the party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of the Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.